Welcome to the initiative HP Online Teaching Assistant by HP Education. Today, we will talk about getting started with the Google Administration Console. In this educational session, we'll do a short tour of the Google Administration Console. Today's objectives are, explore the console to get an idea of what it's like, know the basic features, and finally, make a demo of how to use the console. Before we start, let's put these questions into context. What is the console and what is it for? The Google Suite Administration Console is an application that allows us to set up security policies in our domain and manage applications, users, and Chromebooks. Who can use it? All schools or companies can use it with G Suite, i.e. anyone within that educational or business domain. They only need to have the necessary permissions to use it. Is it hard to use? The Google Console is very visual and has various configurations available, so you need to invest time learning how it works. If you are from IT, it's sure to be easier. But for those who are not, it's a matter of practice. How do I access the console? You can do it in two ways. From the nine dots of your Google session where all the applications appear, you look for the one that says Administration. Or you can also do it from this link, admin.google.com. I'm going to go to my Chrome, which is already opened from my Google account. And, as I mentioned, from the nine dots, search for the admin option. Here it is. Once open, we have all these options. I will explain the different parts. And now, we'll begin to make a demo of those I have planned. Let's begin. The dashboard. It merely sends notifications. For example, if you haven't added an email or something remains to be configured, it's super basic. Users. Here are, or will appear, all the users that are within our domain. It is essential to have this item configured well since, from here, we can create, add emails, and assign permissions to users based on their role within the organization. Then, there is groups. It's vital to have it under control, because the groups are those we've created from management so that anyone from the administrative team or a teacher can send an email just by typing in the name of the group. That means it would reach everyone in the class who is a part of that group. There could be a group of teachers, administrative and management staff, or groups by grade. That means each year it must be updated to avoid errors in submissions. Organizational units. This is the skeleton of the console, because in the organizational units, we'll see the different levels at which policies are set up. Building and resources. From here, you can create rooms, for example, a library. It can then be linked to your Gmail or your calendar, and you can make reservations through it. Devices. Here we see everything related to the Chromebooks that we have in our domain, including phones or tablets. This means that every child who logs on to a device of our organization will be seen here. Apps. On the one hand, there are the G Suite apps, the additional services, and then there are the other apps that can also be managed from here. Security. You can practically do a webinar on this topic, but in a nutshell, it's where we configure everything related to security. Reports. You generate reports to see which applications are used. Billing. If we want to buy additional services from Google, you should remember, however, that the Google Administration Console is free. Account settings is where your organization's information will appear and where you can make updates. From here, you can include the logo of your organization as well. Admin roles. As an administrator, from here, I can give different permissions to people. For example, in very large institutions, there are times where permissions can be granted to teachers to create students or group accounts. Domains. From here, we can add or remove any secondary domain we want. For example, a subdomain for testing. Data migration. To migrate data from other mail accounts, like from Outlook, for example. Support to contact the support team if you need help with anything. So these are the features that the console has. Now let's see how to create an organizational unit. In colleges and universities, these units are often used to organize classes. For example, primary, secondary, third, fourth, and from there on, security policies are usually established. In my case, I have advanced education, and I have these two units, which have inherent security policies. What does that mean? that these two have the same policies established for advanced education, which is the parent unit. Now I will create one. Click on the button with the plus sign. We name it 
Let's say I'm going to create a unit for a grade 6A. Click on Create. As you can see, we have 6A within Advanced Education, but maybe we don't want it on the same level as everything. Then we can move it within the Students unit. Then all policies will be inherent as mentioned before. Once we have created some organizational units, that becomes our framework. Now let's move on to Create Users. I go back to the console and click on Users. Here we can see all the students or everyone within our organization. I'll show you how easy it is to create a new user. Click on Add New User. We write a name, Peter, and the last name, Leech. If we have the student's photo, we could add it from here. As you can see, by default, an email is generated for the student. Peter at groupo-ae.com.co Nevertheless, it can be modified. I'll write dot leech because there may be several Peters in school. You can also add a secondary email and a phone number to contact him in the future if necessary. I can write a password here or tell it to generate one automatically. And when the student logs in for the first time, it will ask him to change the password. Click on Add New User, and you're done. A school typically has many students, 100, 300, 500, or 1,000. So creating users manually one by one like I just did would be a never-ending task. To do this, you can upload users in bulk from a CSV file with this button, Bulk Update Users. And as you see, here you can download a blank CVS template with an example of how you should fill it out. Student's first name, last name, email address, password, and define to which organizational unit I want to assign this user. For example, I could put slash students slash grade 6a. A slash should always be used to separate. In this case, I want to stay in the grade 6a unit, which, if you recall, was within students. And from this button, I would upload my CSV file and then click on Upload. And this would make our task much faster. To finish, I want to teach you a little about the applications. That means that after creating the framework with the organizational units and creating the users, we can go to the console and log into apps. And as I mentioned before, here are the G Suite applications, additional services, and marketplace applications that can be managed from here. Let's go to G Suite. In this case, these are the applications that we've activated for all users of my domain. However, it usually happens that by default, Google Chat, Classic Hangout, and Google Meet have come disabled, so you need to review and make sure to activate them so teachers and students will be able to communicate online. If I log into Google Meet, I'll see the Tools setting. Make sure that Recording and Stream are enabled. If for any reason you don't want the 6A students to make video calls, just go to the Organizational Units, click on Grade 6A, and in Stream, disable this option. Changes you make can take up to 24 hours to take effect. Another thing that may happen is that some additional services might also be disabled, such as YouTube. If we go back to the apps in additional services, check that the applications that teachers and students are going to use are enabled. I would then search on YouTube to ensure it's on. Also, in the Permissions tab, you can restrict access to content, which is useful if you don't want them to access topics outside the educational scope. And now, to finish, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can manage a Chromebook. We go back to the console and look for the Devices button. For this, you need to have the license, one per device. With it, you'll be able to manage the devices in your educational institution. Here, you can determine the navigation settings in Chrome. In Chrome, you could, for example, define applications and extensions for school devices according to the users. Then, depending on the grade level, Chromebooks will have limited applications and extensions. You can do all that from here. So as you can see, the Google Console is quite good, quite complete. And today's session was to show you some of the initial steps to work with it. Thank you for watching this video offered by HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education.